Good morning, welcome to Planet Mojo. Right now, Izzy and I are going for a walk on our road, but as soon as I get back, we're gonna plant some prairie grasses. Izzy and I walked down this road exactly two days ago and right up in that area, well, if you've seen the video, there was at least a foot of snow up there, but it rained yesterday. Well, it rained actually for about a day and a half and it's been incredibly windy. It's windy right now too, but we're kind of sheltered by the ridge here. It looks like we have almost a clear path all the way to the end, but it does look like we're going to be walking through some snow. And I was looking around a little earlier and I seen some acorns. Usually this time of year, you'll find acorns on the ground with a root sticking out. So we'll see if we can find some of them on the way back. Here's that mushroom from last year. This thing was pretty good sized. Looks like Tater is going to come with us. So I got stuck with the gator right about here. That was, I don't know when I got stuck, it was probably two feet of snow. And then on that walk, it was maybe 18 inches right here and about a foot up there. And now, yep, we can walk through there without going through the snow, which is pretty bizarre that the snow melted that fast. All right, I will get back with you if there's anything interesting. Otherwise, I will, oh, we got two cats coming. Yeah, it definitely might get interesting. Otherwise, I will get back with you at the greenhouse and we'll get some seeds and some dirt. Okay, I'm just looking at a few of these acorns. These are probably rotten, but I should find a bunch of them that have a little root coming out. These are all red oak. The deer take up all the white oak right away because white oak acorns are sweet and red oak are bitter. So they only eat the red oak if they have to. All right, I will get back with you if I find one. Well, we're almost to the end and I did not find any acorns that were sprouted. In fact, I found very few acorns. Last year, the white oaks didn't put out any acorns at all. None that I seen. I looked on the trees and everything and the reds barely put any out. It was a drought year last year and it looks like they just reserved their energy. Yeah, usually you'd find just acorns everywhere in this area. And as soon as the snow disappears, you'll find them on the ground with uh, a root, maybe an inch long coming out of them. Yep, and you just put them in a pot and you have a little red oak tree. White oak, when the acorns drop from a white oak, White oak sprouts right away in the fall and most of the time they don't even get a chance to do that because the deer eat them. But if they do get the chance, they sprout right away in the fall. Red oak, the acorns have to overwinter and then they sprout the next year. All right, enough of this nonsense. Let's get some seeds planted. All right, we are in the greenhouse and here are the grasses I'm planting this year. Actually, we have uh, milkweed, purple milkweed. Those seeds are from two years ago and I forgot to plant them, so hopefully they come up. I have two packets of 20 and purple milkweed is not invasive like common milkweed. So I hope to plant this out in front of the house so we get the monarchs and stuff and don't have this just running everywhere and going into the other gardens and stuff. 
Okay, and our grasses for 2021 are split beard blue stem, foul mana grass, June grass, which I've planted before, sand drop seed, the purple milkweed, of course, and strawberry popcorn. This is pretty interesting. We'll talk about that later, but we'll start back with the split beard blue stem. Well, actually, both of these, neither one of these is listed as native to Wisconsin. And this one actually lists almost every state except Wisconsin. This one is mostly southern states. But I believe both of these are in my book of native Wisconsin grasses. Um, I do believe this one is like just on the border between Wisconsin and Illinois. And this one grows in the southern half of Wisconsin. So neither one is listed, but I know for a fact this one grows in this area. And this one grows a little bit south of here, but it should grow just fine here. And it is native to Wisconsin. This one is just a short blue stem. And I'm going to be planting a bunch of it in the prairie grass garden. And then I'll mix the seeds in amongst the other areas. Foul mana grass is specifically a wet area grass, and I'm going to be using this for the gray water discharge. This will be part of the gray water system and will cleanse the water that comes out of the washer. The only thing that's in our gray water is the kitchen sink and the washer. That's it. June grass is a cool season. A uh, clump forming just a short grass and it is native to Wisconsin. I really like this It's a nice looking grass and like it says it comes out in June The warm season grasses are just starting to poke out in June and June grass is actually Pretty much full-grown it dies off in July and then starts back up at the end of the year again and then we have sand drop seed I don't have a bunch of information on hand about sand drop seed other than I think there's four drop seeds. There might be more than that. And this is just another one. The seeds are just insanely tiny. So what I'm going to be doing with this is I'm going to plant a few flats so I know exactly where they're planted. I need to be able to identify them later. And then with the rest of the seed, I'm going to mix it with vermiculite or perlite or sand or something. And then I'm going to go around and weed and seed. And I'll show you that. That's kind of interesting. And it's a great way to replace the nurse grass with your actual grasses. Covered that. And that leaves us with strawberry popcorn. They don't know a whole lot about it. It is like a heritage plant but they have no idea what the origins are. They believe this was an early hybrid that was cultivated by the Olmecs or the Mayans or something. And it's probably one of the earlier versions of maize. And as they bred it, it got bigger and bigger and the kernels got bigger. And this is just a, a older version that ha still has the tiny little seeds. All maize was originally just a grass, and they just kept cultivating it. Same thing with rye and wheat and oats and stuff. It was all just grasses that they kept cultivating, and the seeds just kept getting bigger and bigger until you get to the hybrid corns and stuff that we have now. So this is just a really old variety of maize, and I planted this actual corn Oh, it was about 17 years ago. Natalie was just a little baby, and we lived in the city at the time, and I wanted a little cornfield that she could hang out in. So I planted a patch of this about maybe 8 by 12, and this only gets 4 to 5 feet tall. So when she was a baby and this stuff got a little bigger, she would run around in her little cornfield. It was pretty awesome. So this is really old. I don't know how much of this is going to grow, but even if I only get a few plants, that'll be great. Then I'll have seeds for next year. So I guess we'll start with the split beard blue stem and just work our way across.
Okay, these seeds feel pretty chunky. Oh, look at how fluffy they are. Okay. This is going to be slightly problematic. I'll probably get two or three seeds into each one, or maybe more. With uh, little blue stem, they debeard the seeds. They get rid of that fluff, but they probably can't on these. Yeah, I'm probably getting four or five seeds in each hole, but. I'm not going to take a bunch of time and try to sort it out into one or two or whatever. Any seeds that are left over after I plant these two flats, I'm going to go around and weed and seed with them. So all of it will get used. Okay, I have two flats of split beard blue stem planted and a boatload of seeds left. And like I said, I'm gonna weed and seed and use up the rest of these seeds a bit later in the year and I'll take you along for that. Next is the foul mana grass and it's a very fine seed. There's 2,000 seeds in this tiny little corner here. So I'm gonna use a, a little hand seeder with this. All right, with this foul mana grass, it says surface germination. I wrote that on there. I probably read that somewhere. They say an eighth of an inch, but these seeds are so small. So if I push some to an eighth of an inch and leave some on the surface and just press them down, some are bound to grow. It's going to be pretty interesting to see how tiny these are because the feel of it it feels like they're smaller than poppy seeds, but let's see. They're much smaller than poppy seeds. Right. Leave most of them in there. So there you go. They are very, very tiny. So we got a bunch of numbers on this. We'll set it to zero. Otherwise they'll all come spilling out. I believe there's enough room for them to get under. Nope, I have to set it. Set it at one. And they're already coming out. Okay, this should be interesting. got to kind of watch real close and you're pretty much always going to get five six seeds or more with these tiny little seeds because when you're tapping it it has little like ledges on the shoot here and when you tap it that releases the seeds and it doesn't release one seed at a time. I really want this grass to grow. I need to have several wet area grasses that are going to digest the wastewater. And it's actually pretty clean water because, you know, any grass that is by where it discharges grows just fine. So it'll just be nice having a few wet area grasses growing because we don't have any wet areas here. And it'll be interesting to see some. This little hand seeder is a little bit damp, so I'm getting a little bit of clumping action. And I'll scrape those seeds out when I'm wrapping up 
on the next flat. See that some of them are sticking along the chute. Now, just got to press all of these down and I'll do one more flat of these. Little pro tip here, you could see I got a bunch of these foul manna grass seeds stuck in here. Some of them are a little wet. If you don't get all of these out of here, you're going to end up having this grass growing in the next flat. If that's okay with you, then just go ahead. But in this case, it's not. So what I'm going to do is go out where I'm going to end up planting these and dig these out with, with this little point here and make sure this is 100% clean. With these surface sown seeds, you got to make sure that they're in intimate contact with the soil. So you basically have to press down the soil and like smooth the top because you really can't see these tiny seeds after, you know, after a little bit, you can't see them at all. They just blend in with the dirt. So make sure your dirt is all smoothed down. And I noticed something else continued down here. It is native to Wisconsin. So it would just be the split beard blue stem, which was like on the border of Wisconsin and Illinois, but they have found this in Wisconsin. So I'm going to call it a native to Wisconsin. No matter what, it's a native to America. And if it grows, it grows. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Okay, next up will be June grass. All right, I have a good deal of June grass planted around here. I've collected the seed right from the plants and I've kind of hand tossed them here and there for the last two years. But I want to get a, a flat of them growing so that I can put some exactly where I want them and be sure that they're growing. June grass is a cool season grass as is foul manna grass. I might have said this is a warm season grass, but it's not. This is a cool season grass, but I believe that it grows like all summer long if it's in a wet area, but I'm kind of new to it, so I'll let you know next year exactly how it grows. Yeah, this stuff isn't really broken up, so I'm going to have a lot of seeds in each one of these little openings so this one's going to be a bit messy but that's okay okay and then the rest of these will be weed and seed all right these are going to get buried what do we got here Oh, a little clear rock. Push these under a bit. I'll leave a couple on on top of the soil. You never know what's going to grow. Okay, now for the sand drop seed. I'm guessing it got its name because the seeds, I mean, they look finer than sand. These are super fine, so each one of these cells is going to get quite a few seeds in it, but that's okay. When I go to do the seeding right into the ground, I will definitely mix this with a bunch of sand and then just dump a little bit in each hole. Yeah, that is a zillion seeds. I wonder if it even says... That's probably like 10,000, 20,000 seeds maybe even more. Okay, let's get it into the little container. And I will show you that. Yeah, that's easily a thousand seeds right there. Just insane. Maybe this one 
will work on zero. I thought I did it on zero with a different one. Yeah, it's got to work on zero. They go right underneath the plastic there. Oh yeah, easy. And I've probably been putting at least 10 in each of these and there's basically no way to avoid it. And this is also a uh, native to Wisconsin. All of the grasses that I plant are native to Wisconsin, except for, well, this is native to Wisconsin. It's just, it hasn't been found growing in this area yet, but it likely has grown in this area. The records are based on what was found like a hundred years ago, and it was really hard for them guys to move around at that time. This is hard to get off. There we go. And the strawberry popcorn or ancient maize. I really don't know if that grew in Wisconsin or not. I just know that it's going to. Basically, I'm going to grow that in the garden. So. I don't know if it'll grow year to year without reseeding it or not. Alright, I'm gonna go clean this out out in the prairie and I'll be right back and then I gotta push this down and then I just have the purple milkweed left. Okay, I'm gonna come back at the end and put these into holeless trays and then put that whole thing into a daisy tray and then spritz these real good with water. So we got that coming up, but for right now, purple milkweed. Okay, and like I said, these milkweed are two years old, and I got them online. I bought from the place before. It's a place that specializes in different kinds of milkweed. I'll put the address up if I remember. They're big seeds and what I'm going to do is put one in each of the cells here and then I'll go around and add another one until I'm out of seeds. This is a 32 cell tray and this is supposed to be 20 seeds per packet. So we'll see if that holds true. There might be extra seeds. All right, I think I'm going to put them in here just so I can see them. I'll show you these seeds before I get too many of them in there. They look just like common milkweed seeds. And I'm trying with my big clumsy hands to get one in each of them for now. And it's actually working fairly well. Okay, these seeds you can actually see on the surface. It came out to, I guess I got two of them in some of them by accident, but it came out pretty close to just ending up at the last cell, which is just fine. Even if half of these grow, that'll give me a real good little patch of milkweed that is not going to spread like crazy and take over my vegetable garden and the entire garden out front. I had common milkweed out there and it was just going insane. Common milkweed spreads by runners and it just goes all over the place.
With these, I'm trying to get the seed under the soil, eighth inch to a quarter of an inch. And that's about it. All right. Got to shell this corn. I have no idea if any of these will germinate. Like I said, I believe I did this when Natalie, she was either one or two, and she's 18 now, so or just about 18. So it's been many, many years that this has been sitting around. I would guess that this might have a 10% germination rate, but it could be that none of them germinate. We'll see. I would really like for these to germinate because these are the actual plants that fall. Natalie and I picked all this stuff and we tied some of it up to give away to friends and relatives. And I have a whole jar of shelled stuff. And if this doesn't work, I can try that. That's been out of the air for a long time. Okay, with this, I guess I'll press a couple into each cell. You know, I'm just going to kind of go along and drop them in. And then go back and press them down. I will actually be glad if even one of these grows, so. If all of these grow, I'm going to have a mess here, but you wouldn't think that would happen after all these years. So I'm just going to push all of these under, or not under the soil, but push all the cells down and then cover this with a little bit more soil. And then we'll see what happens. Oh, and I'm going to take... I'm going to take the rest of this and soak it overnight and then I'm going to scarify the seeds and see if that helps. I'll plant these somewhere else. Some plants need a little bit of help and scarifying it is the only way to get some plants to grow. But it's been so long I can't remember what we did with this. I think we just pushed it into the ground though. But that's when it was young, fresh seed. Now it's old, dried out seed. All right, now I'm gonna go get a water bottle. Okay, that's it for the strawberry popcorn slash maize. I do believe it was actually a maize that was adapted as a popcorn. I guess it's not all that good as a popcorn. And it probably makes a better maize than popcorn. But for the most part, people just use it for decorative but for the most part, people just use it for decorations these days. And what I'm doing is putting these into trays without drainage holes and then a daisy carrier, uh, which makes it easy to move around without flopping and stuff. And a little bit later on, I'll put it in trays with drainage holes so I can water it from above and just kind of drench it. 
Okay, that's going to wrap it up. I brought all of the flats into the breezeway for the time being. They, none of them should come up for at least a week. I'm waiting on some lights, and when those get here, I'm going to set them up over in room 13 in the machine shed, and then I'm going to transfer everything over into there, and they'll probably be under lights for maybe two weeks or so. And what else? Oh, all right, I had to wait for a little bit of wind making a huge amount of noise. These are the lilacs that I took cuttings from a week ago. I'm not sure if it was exactly a week. I'll, I'll put the date on the screen. But you can see they are going to have leaves any time now. Uh, within a day or two, these are going to have leaves. And we got one, two, three, four that are going to have leaves real soon. And the rest will probably follow. Hopefully they have roots as well. They do not need roots to make leaves. So if they make leaves and they're not making roots, they're going to use up all their energy and die. So hopefully they're making roots right now as well. But you don't want to knock them out of the pot and check and mess things up. So I will check on these probably after a month so three more weeks i'll check on these and they should have roots and i should be able to split them into their own pots at that time just thought you might want to see that the lilacs are real early bloomers so they're going to want to get going okay that's it for today um, we've got a lot more on this planting coming up of course so if you want to see that make sure you subscribe and click on the update icon if you have any questions or comments, make sure you put them in the comment section below. And if you share the video and or give it a like, it helps the channel out greatly. Thanks for watching and have a great day. I got a cat on my shoulder. Can't tell which one it is. I think it's Tater. So that is, uh, yeah, it is Tater.